Good morning, everyone. Good morning, brother. And to our dads, a very happy Father's Day. Today, this is being, Mass is being offered for all of our fathers, both the living and deceased. The Lord is the strength of his people, a saving refuge for the one he has anointed. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance, and govern them forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. My friends, as we enter once again into this wonderful and glorious mystery of Christ's love for us, let us take a moment, first of all, to acknowledge our sins and failings. Let's remember in a special way our dads, both living and deceased. Let's remember those who are suffering any type of illness and those who care for them. Let us pray for ourselves that through this celebration of the Eucharist, we become true disciples of Christ in faith, hope, and love. And we do these things in acknowledging our sinfulness so that we could worthily celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you sent us the spirit of truth to be our helper and guide. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you died and rose again to bring us new life. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give, you are the giver of every good gift. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring each of us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive, we are never deprived of your guidance, those you set firm on the foundation of your love, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trampled. Then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My prosecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe the mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you I have encrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response, or your psalm refrain. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord, Lord your in your great, great love, love, answer me. For your sake I bear insult, and shame covers my face. I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's children, because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. Lord, in your, in your love, answer, answer me. I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O God. In your great kindness, answer me with your constant help. Answer me, O Lord, for bountiness is your kindness. In your great mercy, turn toward, Lord, Lord in your great love, answer me. See you, lowly ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your heart revive. For the Lord hears the poor. 
and his own who are in bonds. He spurns not, let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and whatever moves in them. Lord, in your great love, answer me. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the one man's sin entered the world, and through sin death, and thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin, after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one the many die, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The spirit of truth will testify to me, says the Lord, and you also will testify. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. This reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both the soul and the body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. And everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. And whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. This weekend, in the readings, we celebrate a sense of what is called divine mercy. Divine mercy. Jesus tells us in the Gospel that we should fear no one. Why? Very simply because God our Father watches over us at all times and in every situation. And he assures us we do not have to fear. Why does he do this? Simply out of love for us, because we are his creation. Why should we not fear? Because we have the words of Christ himself. Do not be afraid. I am with you always. And to adapt that attitude, that frame of mind, demands faith. Not a simple faith of I believe and we walk on our way, but a deep-rooted faith, laying all that we are, all of our problems, all of our situations at the feet of Christ. Does that mean that bad things will not happen to us? Of course not. God never promises that everything will be wonderful like a beautiful day like today. In every aspect of our lives, we have problems. We have challenges. Things that don't go the way we want. But God promised us that he will be with us simply because he is the solution. He is the guide. He is the one that shows us the way. We get upset with God? Yes, yeah, sometimes we do. Even Martha got very upset with Jesus when her brother died. Where were you? We waited all this time. We sent messages. 
And now my brother is dead. And Christ assures us that don't worry, Martha. His life is fulfilled. And it's the same thing with us. Things come our way that just don't fit into our plans. What do we do? Start an earthquake? Scream to heaven for vengeance? No. To battle with Almighty God is a losing battle, simply because whatever happens, it's for our good and His greater glory. Even Christ on the cross cried out for help. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But deep down in his heart, he knew that that sacrifice meant heaven for you and me. That sacrifice brought a whole new meaning as to what it means to love God and our neighbor. Because very often, love, patience, is sacrificial. And we have to destroy the old person in us and bow to the will of God. Being upset with God makes us think at times that he is not with us. It's about time we rethink our image and our relationship with Almighty God. He's not that angry man way up there throwing lightning bolts now. He is a loving Father who created us, a loving Father who sent his Son to redeem us, Father who sent the Holy Spirit to enlighten and guide us. And if we do not use these things, then we are not worthy of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Christ makes that clear in the Gospel. Because anger, misinterpretation, all those things deny the presence of Christ in us. In that first reading from Jeremiah, he thanks God. And if we remember the story of Jeremiah, then we come to understand that God allowed Jeremiah to be persecuted, beaten, scorned, despised, and cast into a pit. And yet, what does Jeremiah do? He gives praise to God. Why? Because he recognizes that God is with him, that God has called him, and that God is always faithful. And it's kind of reminiscent of Job, who had everything the world could offer, then nothing. And what did his friends say? How could you be so complacent? Raise your hand against Almighty God and tell him who you are and what you expect. And Jeremiah very simply says, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Praise be the name of the Lord. If we could have a docile mind and heart like that. The world we live in now would not be in the mess it's in. The church that God has called us to would not be in the mess it's in. We've taken that step back from Almighty God. In a sense, we put ourselves before Him. And that only means problems, disappointment, and hurt. St. Paul's letter to the Romans talks about sin in our world. And we don't have to look far to find sin. Usually all we have to do is look into our own hearts. That all-important examination of conscience. How well do I know the person of Christ Jesus? How well have I imitated him in my relationship with others? How sacrificial have I been in my love of God and my neighbor? And if you keep quiet for a moment, you will get the answer. If we have any doubts, then look at the things happening in the world today. This pandemic, the persecutions that are going on, the racial tensions, all those things that speak of a world void of the will of God and his presence in people's lives. You know, even those who do not believe can see the brokenness and darkness that has entered not only the world, but people's lives. How sad. 
How sad that this enters into a creation that's so beautiful. A creation that was meant for other things. And yet here we are, angry, broken, misunderstood, accuser. My brothers and sisters, in the final analysis, we are invited to live with God and to trust that he is with us. God will not make our lives easy, but he will always be with us to strengthen us and show us the way. God will show us the way to deepen our trust in him. And most importantly, our love for one another. When that is missing, then we are not worthy to call Christ our brother, God our Father. And this isn't me talking. This is Christ, who was crystal clear about his relationship with each other and with Almighty God. What is the challenge today? The challenge is to have that sense of divine mercy. A mercy that we all want, but a mercy are we willing to share with others. We are always told by Jesus that we are to be loved and that we need not fear. To believe that it is a deep act of faith. And it's not a faith that just means I believe and we walk our way. It is a faith that we allow to grow each day in our life. It is a faith that is constantly tested. And with the grace of God, with the power of the Spirit, we will pass that test. And these are times when we are living that we are tested, sometimes beyond our endurance. But remember those words of Pope John Paul II at his inauguration. Do not be afraid. Open yourself to Christ. And when we do that, anxiety lessens. Fear dissipates. And we have that sense of belonging to someone who is unique. At some point in our lives, we must change from a person of doubt to a person who believes completely with all our heart and all our soul and all our mind that Jesus is Lord and that he put us in this world for a mission. Go and make disciples of others. Not by word, but by deed. Let us pray that this day, as we come together under unusual circumstances, that the gift of faith, hope, and love is given to us and is allowed to grow in union with the giver of faith, hope, and love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And now together, let us profess our faith in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
And now, my friends, trusting in the kindness of our Heavenly Father, we offer him our prayers and our needs. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, may he continue to grow in holiness and wisdom in his service to the living and true God. Let us pray to the Lord. For civic leaders and those in authority, may the Lord provide his grace for the peaceful resolution of conflicts and let us pray to the Lord. For people throughout the world who are persecuted for their faith, may God's love give them courage as they stand for Christ in their darkness. Let us pray to the Lord. For our community, may we grow in gifts of faith, hope, and love. Through sacrificial love, let us pray to the Lord. For those who suffer any type of illness and for those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For all of our fathers, living and deceased, that the Lord may bless them for the sacrifices they made, the love they showed us, and may they enjoy his kingdom forever. Let us pray to the Lord. We thank you, Father, for your steadfast love. Please hear and answer the prayers that we offer, for we make them in the name of Jesus the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. And by the wisdom of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ. Who humbled himself to share? Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual bread. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action. We may make offerings of a heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Proud of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an any death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hopes and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, Robert, our Bishop Emeritus, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. In regards to the chapter 11, in his letter he says that it is important to note that it is only the cooperation of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Syracuse that has filed for reorganization before the U.S. Bankrupt Court. The parishes within the diocese, the foundations, including the Hope Appeal, Catholic Charities, Catholic Schools, our parishes and other entities associated with the Catholic Church of Syracuse are separate corporations and are not directly involved in these proceedings. So we don't have to worry about our parishes, our schools, or any of the other institutions. It's just directed at the Diocese of Syracuse itself. So it gives us a bit of a breathing room. What I would ask you to do, because I know it troubles him terribly, is to pray for Bishop Lucia. He hasn't been in this diocese for yet a year, and this heavy burden is put upon his shoulders. We were at a meeting with him the other day, and I assured him that I will mention his needs to our faithful people here in Norwich, and we will continue to pray for him as he guides us to a greater knowledge of Christ and a security as a Catholic community. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.